This is the Roku Plus Series 55-inch 4K HDR QLED. It's the first TV built by Roku. Let's check out what's in the box first, in which we do get the TV itself, the Voice Remote Pro, as well as a USB charging cable for the remote. Includes the TV stand. You'll need your internet, wireless, or wired router, as well as a screwdriver. So here are the tech specs on the side of the box. Picture quality is 4K HDR10+, plus Dolby Vision QLED display. Panel backlight is full array local dimming. Refresh is 60Hz. Audio is Dolby Atmos. The connectivity is Ethernet, Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2. It's got four HDMI inputs, one antenna, slash cable input, composite input, USB input, and a digital audio output and headphone output. At the very top, we do have the remote control and one of the stand pieces. Let's look at the back of the TV without looking at the uh, serial number over there. So we've got our cable for our power. Looks like it's plugged directly into the TV. Then over here, we've got our USB. We've got Ethernet, our composite, so video left and right. Good for old school game consoles as well as our uh, VCR. We still use those, don't we? Now we've got HDMI, it looks like our four, three, as well as two, uh, two and one are up there. So easy access, at least, you know, from the side coming out. Plenty of space right here. We also have our antenna or cable TV. We have a headphone jack. So if you have a really long cord, go for it. You can use like wireless headphones as well with this TV. If it's not with the TV directly, you can use it with the Roku mobile app. There's also optical. So if we want to use our sound bar, we could plug it in straight there or the HDMI eARC. So we've got our stand right here and the screws ready to go in. So you just put it at the bottom, slide it all into place. So taking this power cord off, you just kind of go like that. Get this all the way out. So it's telling us we've got to go ahead and pair the remote and the remote does have a belt and battery so that's pretty cool. It's all rechargeable with this USB cable. Looks like it's micro USB but uh, there we go. So we'll go ahead and plug it in make sure it has a charge. So starting from the top it is voice. That's what this little microphone is. It's got our d-pad all that jazz so we'll just hold down that and talk to it. There's also the Netflix, Disney+, Plus, Apple TV+, Plus, as well as HBO Max channels. On the side here, we can turn off the feature Hey Roku if we wanted to, so it's no longer listening to us all the time, or activate it by turning it on. There's also the headphone jack, and this is our remote control uh, finder speaker. So volume controls as well, muting if we wanted to. So. In order to pair the remote, we go to the very bottom of the remote control, push it on, so it's lighting up green, and now we wait. Looks like it's pairing the remote. Looks like it's been paired. Let's see what happens. Yep, we're good to go. So set up for home use or set up for store use. We're going to do home use. As well as there's the wireless or wired connection, we're going to do wireless as well. Set up new wireless connection. So we have all of our Wi-Fi networks here. We're going to select our Wi-Fi network and insert the password. Once we inserted the password, if we click on OK, make sure it's connecting. Looking, of course, for software updates right now. Looks like there is a software update, so we click on OK and download it. To activate the TV, we have to insert our email address that we use with our Roku account. After we insert our email address, it does tell you to check your email. This is what the email looks like, so we're going to click on Activate. So going on Roku's website, it does ask us what do you want the device name to be, as well as what room 
I'm going to click on Office, click on Continue. Now it's asking us, do you pay for cable or satellite TV? I'll click on No. Do you subscribe to any of these? It's saying now select your interest to help build your channel guide. I'm going to ignore all of this for now and just click on Continue. Of course, it's trying to tell us, hey, you can add more channels to your Roku home screen as well. And there are some free trial offers. Setup is now complete. Looks like it's adding all the channels that are associated with my account. Now that we did all that, we can connect your devices. Connect your devices to this TV, the cable box, the game consoles, etc. I'll turn them all on. Hands-free voice. We'll go ahead and click on I understand. Tips so you can speak toward the remote, not the TV. So we're all done. Let's get you streaming. Get to know your new Roku TV. Let's just try Hey Roku. Hey Roku. You listen to me. Yeah, listen to me. I mean, it's a good movie, right? This is important, understanding our wireless connection, because this is supposed to be Wi-Fi 6. It says 252 megabits per second is the internet download speed. So let's go to TV picture settings. There is the TV brightness, which is currently set to auto. There's the Dolby Vision notification, which is set to on. You can adjust the TV brightness a little bit. So this is a Dolby Vision video. I want to click on resume and you'll see the Dolby Vision notification once it, there it is. So if you have a lot of light coming on through, you'll have a lot being reflected. While you're watching your show, you can click on the start button, get all your TV settings. So there's sleeper time, picture settings, sound settings, wireless headphones, accessibility and captions, as well as picture off. So the sleep timer, you can set for however much time you want. The picture settings, there's TV brightness. So this is on auto. There's darker, there's dark, normal, bright, brighter, or just on auto. Then there's also picture mode, Dolby Vision Dark. So right now we're in Dolby Vision Dark. There's Dolby Vision Normal, as well as Dolby Vision Bright. I mean, that's pretty significant. You just brighten up the screen if you want. But again, so this is specifically for Dolby Vision content. There's also picture size. So we can auto detect and show the best picture size. Auto, direct, normal, stretch. So change it up. There's local dimming and right now we have it on high. So if we go to off, you can see how the picture kind of comes back to life. There's also low, medium, and high. Micro contrast, we turn on low, medium, high. Yeah, I'm not really seeing anything happening. Then there's dynamic contrast, which is not available. And you can set the color temperature to warm and cool or just normal. Then you can reset your settings and you can apply these settings to all inputs if you want. You can also fine tune the picture and this is where you can actually go on in and adjust the brightness if we wanted to, like a normal TV, turning it up all the way. That looks great, doesn't it? There's backlight, brightness, contrast, sharp, color, tint. As far as the sound settings, we've got our sound mode currently as standard. There's dialogue, movie, music, and night, as well as the virtual surround. This is on right now with Dolby Atmos, or you could turn it off, or you could say on for all. Then there's volume leveling, which is currently off, or you could turn that on or there's Dialog Enhancer, which is currently on. You can also turn that off. There's Bass and Treble. Like, look at look how bright and vivid the, the menu is compared to that show. Sheesh. I mean, the blacks are very black. That's really nice. That looks great. There is a button right underneath here. Let's go ahead and push it and see what happens. Oh, it looks like that activates our inputs. So if you ever want to just switch the inputs, looks like you can do a bunch of features here by just pushing right underneath. If we hold it down, our TV does turn off. And if we hit it again, TV turns back on. Now we get to compare my OLED. This is a 55 inch Sony one from about 2018. This is the brand new Roku TV that we're talking about. Both are on max brightness right now. So you can see the bottom one is much brighter 
mainly because it's not an OLED. And also OLED technology has improved over the years as well. So maybe newer ones might be slightly brighter. As we look to the edge, you can see that it kind of fades. It loses some of that color. It looks a little bit more white. It's really straight on that we see the vivid bright colors. Being that this is OLED, it looks pretty crystal clear no matter what angle you're looking it at. Picture settings for Dolby Vision right now are set to dark. I can go to normal as well as there's bright as well. So dark, normal, and bright. I mean, it's significantly brighter overall. So that is kind of nice. It's something to think about if you're in very bright areas of your house. So my OLED is connected to my Roku Smart Soundbar. The Smart Soundbar gave me a speed test of 101 megabits per second, which is good, but the Roku TV gave me 253. That's because it's on Wi-Fi 6. I think that that's on Wi-Fi 5. So specifically for audio, Oh, E.T. just got abducted, oops. Of course, if you want the best audio for your Roku TV, you're gonna wanna pick up a Roku soundbar, but not any soundbar. Pick up the Roku TV wireless soundbar. You'll just plug it into your power outlet and it'll wirelessly connect to your Roku TV. That way you can get all the great audio coming in. I think it's a, a two channel system. You can also connect the Roku TV wireless speakers and that allows for left and right if you want behind you, as well as there's the Roku subwoofer. So specifically for audio purposes, this system is so easy to enhance that I'm not totally worried about, oh, it doesn't have that great of bass because just connecting those audio devices is so simple and easy, anyone could do it. Well, just how simple is it? <laughs> I just happen to have the subwoofer right here. Oh, look at this. So you can't set up the subwoofer unless you have wireless speakers or a wireless soundbar connected first. So let's go ahead and connect my wireless speakers then. I plugged in the Roku wireless speakers over there and over there. So we're gonna connect the wireless speakers, click on continue, continue, and it's searching for wireless speakers one of two. That sounds like it's coming from the right speaker. So we're gonna click on right speaker. Got it, that's correct. That was on my left. And did I hear the subwoofer? That's correct. Fast TV start is turned on. Sure, continue. All done. That's what we're talking about. Easy to upgrade the audio if we wanted to. Again, the TV sounds pretty good for just dialogue, but that bass, if you really want that bass, you gotta go with the package. And that wasn't even with the sound bar as well. So trying to play them a little bit side by side here. The colors on the Roku TV are so much more vivid than the OLED TV. But again, the blacks are black on the OLED. It's kind of that toss up that I'm saying. It seems a lot more blue. And this seems a lot more warm. I mean, you tell me, which one do you think looks better? They both look pretty darn good. Yeah, the Roku TV is just so bright though. And again, the price difference, this was like 3000. This is around six to 700 bucks. I mean, of course, I don't think there's any comparison between the picture quality. If you've got a old TV like this guy, you know, you see how thick the border and the frame is. You might want to consider just upgrading. Look how thin that is by comparison. It's welcome to my garage. This is a Panasonic uh, Vera. What we're going to do, I've got a Roku, I guess it's Express, and we're going to do a check connection to see the internet speed out here in the garage. Garage is detached from the rest of the house. It got 12 megabits per second. So we're gonna check connection and the internet download speed is 37 megabits per second. If we actually load real content here, it looks like it's loading in a very high resolution, no buffering, waiting for the videos to load. So here we have my JVC TV, this is an LCD. It's probably from 2000, let's just say 13. 
And then the Roku TV is at the bottom. Main thing that I'm seeing is that the coloring is a little bit more neutral. You can see it around the eye. Just seems a little bit more neutral than this, which is very green. Because the JVC is a dumb TV, I've had to hook up a Roku. So you see already, as you go to the side here, you've got the HDMI cord all throughout there. And then on the other side, you have the power adapter and the Roku uh, box. I think it's like a Roku Ultra up there. Versus this one, look how sleek that is. Just because you have one cord, you only need one cord. The power cord. So that is something to think about when you're thinking whether or not you should upgrade your older TVs to being a smart TV. Doing the speed test on the Roku Ultra, 44 megabits per second. Roku TV down here, 150 megabits per second. I'm assuming the Roku TV has a much more of the correct colors. Look at this wallpaper, how everything's generally purple in that ocean right there. It's all purple, purple, purple. Now looking on up here, this to me is blue. Roku is purple, right? Not blue. I've been watching this episode again and again, and it's shocking how good these speakers are. I didn't hear this when I was listening to the subwoofer downstairs, but the virtual surround sound that it has is pretty good. Again, the bass and whatever isn't perfect by any means. You still want more oomph, but in comparison to this older LCD TV, holy cow. This is always a fun video to watch, the 4K Dolby Atmos surround sound test around the whole TV. It's pretty black. Obviously the core isn't. Looking at this older TV, look at this, you know? The whole TV basically is lit on up. I mean, this is not black. Another great example is just look at this canyon, man. You see, I don't know, it's very red and very kind of scaly looking, you know? which is, it's very sharp. And looking down here, it's much more soft, more natural looking. It's nighttime now, and you can see this a little bit better, how the text is very pixelated on the LCD screen. Then going down to the Roku TV, look how much crisper it is and rounded. The top one, I would say is almost sharper. Uh, the colors are, exaggerated and then we look at the bottom one and it looks more natural uh, the colors are not popping off the screen by any means I'm looking at the picture really close so I'm like wow am I there look at that angle and the OLED looks fine I mean it looks pretty good straight on the OLED looks darker overall especially around his eyes right there and he's much more lit on up so yeah, overall, from what I can tell is, you know, if you're going to go for a very bright room and you watch TV during the daytime, OLED obviously is not going to be the greatest experience, especially in darker content like Picard. So one of the things that you could do is go for, you know, these LCDs. But then it comes at nighttime, you know, you end up with a situation like this where it's just the image quality looks a lot better more clear at the top than it does at the bottom. You kind of have this haze, this film kind of effect over it. Well, if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below, as well as you can subscribe to this channel for more videos coming soon.